watching Straight Line with Dan Rogers, President and CEO of Cherry Street Mission Ministries. Welcome to today's show. My name is Delray Bush. Today's subject is the myths of homelessness. And this is something, Dan, that we deal with every day at Cherry Street Mission. We do, uh, mostly because humans are involved. You know, we all have perceptions, and humans just in general, we're, we're prone to perceptions. I'm not entirely sure life in general wouldn't uh, revolve without our perceptions of things. Mm -hmm. So certainly, when it comes to homelessness and, and issues that affect people so deeply as to have lost their house, to lose an address, and to become homeless, particularly if they end up at Cherry Street Mission Ministries. Not only are these complex uh, issues and complex problems, but certainly the perceptions and the myths of homelessness are just as complex. I will tell you that we have still in our society probably about a 90-year-old perception of what homelessness is, and that's why we're tackling this topic today on straight line because we really want to make the straightest line possible between the problems that we face every single day and the solutions that are available to us and so the the problem that we're tackling today are the myths and the common misperceptions around homelessness what causes homelessness and what does it mean to be homeless so that our viewing audience along with us can uh, uh, get to solutions uh, rapidly but more than rapidly, Delray, uh, get to them successfully. Because what we're always going to be talking about are not things that fix problems, but um, the elements that are necessary biblically to solve the problems that we face every day. So recently, you and I sat down with, uh, dealt with a young lady by the name of Yolanda, and we asked her this question. Uh, what are your myths or misconceptions or perceptions of homelessness and here's what she had to say when I think about homelessness I think about people that are drug addicted or alcoholics people that didn't take good care of their finances people that were just on the fringe of society mentally sick I think of people that just really just don't want anything out of life when I see people on the corner holding a sign, I think that they're gonna use the money for drugs or for alcohol or for something to benefit them in their, in their homelessness. When I think of homeless people, I think that their gender is mostly males. I think that because they're the ones that I see holding the signs, they're the ones that I see out panhandling and begging. So there it is. This is, uh, I think Yolanda embodies a lot of the problems that we all face every day. The reality is that we not only are working with a long-held viewpoint of homelessness, but we are up against what we now perceive as a complex growing problem around homelessness, like mental illness and like alcoholism and to dereliction and those kinds of things. And uh, we would love for, to, as a community, we would love to fix this, wouldn't we? Absolutely. We yeah. would just love to fix mm -hmm. uh, homelessness. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can fix it, can we, Delroy? I don't think it's an overnight solution for sure. I mean, it's, it's something that so many people try to fix and um, you know, we, we take measures and we take steps, but it's just one of those things that um, it's so big and we don't know where to, where to start, where to end, where to go next. Mm -hmm. When you came to Cherry Street Mission Ministry some two or three years ago, did you carry with you into this work your own perceptions and misconceptions of homelessness? Absolutely. I was from a small town where um, there, of course, is homelessness, but it might not be as seen. So the things that were on TV were my perception of homelessness. So maybe, um, you know, the alcoholic that is down on their luck can't keep a job because they also have some mental illness. But that's not always the case from what I've seen at Cherry Street in my own time here now. Well, not at all, and certainly when I came 13 years ago, even though I've had global experience, my wife and I have had uh, the opportunity of serving in and living in third world countries, um, still today, uh, my wife is very involved in third world missions. 
even though I myself come from poverty and come from reasons why I myself could have been homeless, still I had uh, my own perceptions of homelessness uh, when I arrived in 2001. Much like Yolanda, I thought, gee, you could fix homelessness by getting a house. Mm -hmm. You could solve homelessness by just getting a job, you know. You could pull yourself up by your own bootstraps if you wanted to and just solve your own problems. Why are you homeless? And I had to learn in quick order, as most people do, that homelessness, like all issues, are very complex. Uh, we don't lose our address and we don't lose access to simple things like tap water and backyards and addresses uh, overnight or uh, on accident. And so because we, we lost them over a period of time, we cannot regain them over a period of time either. I heard you say overnight. Um, so I think another common misconception is that someone does become homeless overnight. It, th that's not true, though, from what we've seen, right? Well, not at all. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I think it would shock a lot of our viewers to know that the average length of time it takes for someone to actually achieve homelessness and I, what I mean, what we mean by homelessness is chronic homelessness when you are homeless every day of your life and there are no easy solutions for you to regain foothold back in the community that actually takes three to five years on average for you to actually achieve homelessness now could you arrive at cherry street mission ministries tonight and receive a bed could you arrive at a homeless shelter and be involved in a homeless solution tonight, yes. But we know that that doesn't necessarily make you homeless. That just makes you somebody who needs a bed tonight. But we actually don't know when we first meet you uh, how long you've been working on this and where exactly you are uh, and how far um, disconnected are you from family or maybe even from reality. Yeah, I just heard you say three to five years. That's a huge amount of time. How does someone take that long to become homeless? Well, because of the family structure. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, let me run a quick exercise with you, Delray. Mm -hmm. um, how many parents do you have? I have two. We're just gonna we're just gonna run a quick. Uh, we're gonna add as we go. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters. Uh, two half brothers. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're up to five. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're up to four. Yep. Grandparents. None. Mm -hmm. uh, cousins. Like two. <laughs> okay, we're up to six. Mm -hmm. uh, aunts and uncles? Three. Three, now we're up to nine, mm -hmm. right? Do you see where we're going? Mm -hmm. You need to start adding up all the people that are in your life, and here, here, is the, here are the quality of people that you're adding up. These are all of the people who really care about you, who do not want you to experience homelessness, no matter how aggressively you're pursuing homelessness. And we'll talk about that in a moment, uh, about how people aggressively pursue homelessness. Um, but the reality is you have to start with mom or dad and work your way down that list. In short, and this may surprise our viewers today, you actually have to abuse every single person in your life in order for you actually to become chronically homeless. Hmm. And I bet when they're doing this, when they're going through this period of um, people and different things, they're probably ha they're probably very stressed out and uh, doing things that are uh, maybe illegal. So they're bringing them into into uh, you know your friends, families, homes, right? And there it is. You've mm -hmm. uh, you've landed on the quintessential ingredient as to why the number is between three and five years on average for someone who is going to experience chronic homelessness in their lifetime because they absolutely have to go through that list one person at a time and it just takes that long of uh, disappointment and abuse and as you said Delray from time to time crime or criminal activity or you're uh, doing something to uh, disturb your family members to the point where they can no longer stay with you. Yeah, it could be maybe not safe for them or they've just probably had it. I mean, it can probably be very frustrating for a parent or a family member to see on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, do you mind if we continue to use you as an example? Oh, not at all. Mm -hmm. How long would it take you to convince your mom mm -hmm. to give up on you? A really long time. <laughs> I mean, sitting here today, could mm -hmm. you even imagine what that looks like? 
It'd be, I mean, it would have to be something huge for my mom to give up on me. We have a great relationship, um, luckily, and, uh, and I mean, she's seen me through every step of the way. I'm her only child, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it would take, I mean, it would have to take her a lot of um, pain. Um, I would have to put her through a lot of pain. Well, mm -hmm. think about what you just said. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a mom, mm -hmm. thank God for our moms, right? Oh my gosh, uh, yes. <laughs> That would never give up on you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you really wanted to start pursuing homelessness, mm -hmm. and thank God you have chosen not to do that. Yes. But if you really wanted to begin pursuing homelessness uh, because you had a drug addiction mm -hmm. or because uh, some other chronic issue was going on in your life, perhaps mental illness, um, think about that mom that you know would never give up on you. What would you have to do? And this isn't necessarily a question more than just a rhetorical question, mm -hmm. Delray, but think about it. And, and I'm asking you as a viewer who's uh, thinking about your own family today if you started pursuing homelessness today, just run the same list that I ran with uh, Del Rey just a moment ago. Add them up. On average, that number somewhere is in the number of 32 to 35 people when I run these exercises with other people. About 32 or 35 people when you add up uncles and aunts and grandparents and cousins and brothers and friends, you have to systematically, methodically, aggressively abuse every single person in order for them to give up on you. That's why homelessness is such a complex issue. So that by the time someone arrives at Cherry Street as chronically homeless, where they are completely disengaged from family, completely off the grid relative to societal's understanding of what it takes to be successful, completely disconnected in most cases from reality, then, um, slowing down and helping yourself as a viewer understand what you're looking at is critical at this moment because right there Del Rey is our topic today the myths of homelessness because when we understand that one of the things that demystifies homelessness is that people do not get there overnight quite simply and how and I'm, I'm hearing you you know talk about this and we know this is true and how did this differ from your perception when you walked into Cherry Street um, all those years ago? Oh, this is a fantastic question because, mm -hmm. you know, as I said a moment ago, um, I've been able to live and serve in third world countries. And I, I have an idea of what it takes to live inside of those populations and serve them in very long term relationships, whether I'm there or not, but just perhaps uh, via some other service. And, but when I came here to poverty in the United States in my own backyard, I came at it from a first world mm -hmm. uh, perception, right? Mm -hmm. Like, get a job. I mm -hmm. know what we can do to solve homelessness. Let's get everybody a job. I know what we can do to solve homelessness. Let's build houses. I know what we can do to solve homelessness. Let's just uh, get everybody, you know, uh, sober. And notice that every one of my solutions, Stellar Ray, started with the word just, like, that's all it would take if we could just get someone a job. And my greatest fear as a member of our community is still that perception is very prevalent within our community. We mm -hmm. still believe that jobs will solve homelessness. Why hasn't that perception changed? Um, you said, you know, it's been the same perception for 90, 100 years. Why hasn't it changed? Well, I think that for two reasons, and it's a great question, two reasons. Number one, homelessness as a topic is really new. If, when you think about when Cherry Street Mission Ministries was started in 1947, we really didn't even have the word homeless, not really. Um, we had the words, like Yolanda said in the video earlier, we had the words of drunk and derelict and hobo, you know, those were our words, and so we opened a soup kitchen on the mean street of Skid Row in downtown Toledo is actually a 300 block of Cherry Street. Um, we started by uh, offering a sandwich and soup because that was the most innovative thing that anybody could have ever done and it was innovative. And Cherry Street started on, on in those grassroots of providing innovative solutions to people in need. But uh, we certainly didn't have the word homeless. So when you think about just the last less than seven decades that homelessness is now a part of our community way of speak. It's now a regular part of our community vocabulary. So to answer your question, one of the reasons why I think our perceptions haven't caught up with our realities 
in how we describe homelessness is because it's happened so fast. And then secondly, uh, because of the speed of how fast homelessness has become um, more prevalent within our community, also as rapidly how homelessness happens has become increasingly complex. When you look at sexual addiction alone, and so we now have registered sex offenders, right? We have mm -hmm. uh, pedophiles. Have we always had those within society? Yes, but when you look at technology, when you look at access to information, and when you look at population growth and population density, I will tell you that we did not have the sophisticated level of addiction today as we, uh, as we did in 1947. It's become much more sophisticated. It's become much more complex because of access and options. So I will tell you that also this has happened right under our noses. We have now uh, homelessness as a complex issue. Those of us that are in the work every day know that it's complex, but yet our community believes that it's still a very simple problem and therefore can be solved very simply. So I hear, heard you say something about sex, sex offenders, and something I notice is that um, the job market might not be so fair for someone who is recovered or doing better or getting better. Um, what have you seen for jobs for people who might have a criminal background or, or you know, had um, some problems in the past or a spotty work history? Yeah, this is good. And I'm going to ask that same question in a moment because of your function mm -hmm. at Cherry Street. But I'm glad you brought the jobs back up because I want to make sure our viewers understand that when I say that jobs won't solve homelessness and houses and home solutions won't solve homelessness, I don't want to say, and I want to make sure I clearly say to our viewing audience and to you, that certainly jobs are necessary. Jobs are critical. Helping people regain their foothold, in most cases, back to the community and reenter the labor force is absolutely critical to the way that we all sustain ourselves in our own housing solutions. And certainly housing and access to housing, particularly to registered sex offenders, is also a very critical issue. Um, helping someone who is so disconnected by law now, mm -hmm. If you are a registered sex offender or a sex offender in any way, by law, you are restricted from, which is the restricted sex offender status, you are restricted from certain areas of community. And you should be. I have grandchildren, so we have thousand foot rules, right? So mm -hmm. you cannot live within a thousand uh, feet of a school or a daycare. Um, and so uh, when you think about neighborhoods and the way they're structured, it's very, very difficult to find housing that fits that criteria. So you have very serious housing issues and to find an employer who is willing to take a risk on you, to bring you into employment and offer you employment knowing that you have a felony and specifically you have a sexual offend, uh, felony is uh, very difficult. Uh, you at Cherry Street Mission Ministries, you are a workforce development uh, manager. I am. How mm -hmm. do you face that every single day? It's definitely probably one of the hardest things about my job. I can um, help someone develop a resume. I can help someone develop their cover letter and um, say all the right things and do all the right things. But when they have to fill out that felony section on that application, sometimes that hinders what they can do. And understandably, um, a sexual offender might not be a good fit in a school. Um, so that's understandable. Um, but. It's, it's something I deal with every day, and it's hard to find the employers that uh, will. I have found a very select few and have had success getting, um, getting people jobs in, um, with, you know, with those backgrounds. But the problem is they don't pay well. I mean, there's not a lot of uh, growth. Um, so you can imagine making minimum wage and trying to get an apartment and do all the right things makes it really hard. Um, I mean, and then, again, access to housing. Um, once they do have the money, where are they going to go? So. Yes. Mm -hmm. So solution number one that we would mm -hmm. offer on today's show, since mm -hmm. this is straight line mm -hmm. solutions, mm -hmm. let me just say once again that, you know, people, particularly people that are connected to God through Jesus Christ, are the solutions to every problem that we face. Mm -hmm. We heard that uh, in uh, previous conversations. But the reality is that one of the great solutions that people can engage in today, Delray, is understand that homelessness is probably not the issue that uh, you thought that it was. Understand that 
Homelessness is not a topic. It's not an issue. Therefore, it is not an agenda. Homelessness is about a human being. And when you think about just the people in your own family, how complex your spouse is, how complex your children are, how complex your neighbors seem to be, uh, then you know that there isn't a one size uh, fits all solution mm -hmm. to the problems within your own household. Mm -hmm. So I would ask our viewers today, as I ask myself every day, slow down. Okay, that's solution number one. Slow down and realize that, that this is not a topic, this is not an issue, this is a human being, mm -hmm. and they are worthy for us to take a look at them in a different way. Yeah, and I think the um, the government can approach it a little differently. Um, you know, rapid rehousing. We hear a lot about that as if that's the answer. Um, you know, food, we'll get you food stamps, things like that. Why isn't that true? Well, it's not true because it doesn't address the soul of the individual. It addresses the address of the individual. Mm -hmm. But you know and I know, because we live in neighborhoods, as do our viewers, that addresses don't solve problems. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. the more people you put under one roof, I guarantee you the more problems you're going to have. You know, I, I often use the metaphor or the analogy of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Do you know that domestic violence is only domestic violence because it's happening at an address? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't happening at an address, we would just call it violence. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. to say that uh, an address or a home solves homelessness uh, is, is no more than you could say that uh, providing a house to someone experiencing house violence is a solution for them either. Sure. And I mean the same thing with, like I said, food stamps. Um, it, it kind of, uh, is, it all circles around, right? It does. Yeah. There's no question that uh, it is all a part of the same issue, all a part of the same problem. And the reason why uh, these things end up being Band-Aid solutions is because, and the reason why we call them societally as Band-Aid solutions, is because the problem continues to rage and the distance between problems and solutions continues to get larger and larger, which is the reason why you and I sit here every week and chat with our viewers about the things that uh, we can solve every single day. Now, I will tell you that we sat back down with Yolanda. She, we saw her in video uh, not more than a few moments ago. We sat back down with Yolanda, you and I, and we actually uh, engaged her from a personal level because a moment ago she was talking to us about her perceptions um, and attitudes toward homelessness and our viewers right now are getting ready to see Yolanda from a different angle. Take a look. I've lived in the Sparrow's Nest since January 31st, 2014. I'm from the Detroit area. I came to the Sparrow's Nest in January because I had been suffering from deep depression, physical illness, and spiritual sickness. And one day while I was sitting on my bed back in Detroit, God spoke to my heart and asked me, did I trust him? And I got honest with God and I said, Lord, no, I didn't trust you, but I was at the end of my rope. Well, I thought that homeless people were people that were drug addicts, alcoholics, um, people that didn't really want much out of life. And when I came here, that all changed. One of the things that I noticed about homeless people was how giving and how sharing. That really took me back. Um, when I first got here, how the ladies shared what they had. Even though they didn't have much, they shared what they had. Um, just how comforting it was and that all of us had the same story. One person's story matched my story. Every piece of someone else's story was a part of my life and I could relate to them. Boy, I hope you heard uh, what Yolanda had to say. And uh, we wanted to introduce Yolanda to you at the beginning of the show as someone who had, like everyone does, perceptions of homelessness, but now you see that Yolanda has experienced homelessness herself. I'm happy to tell you that by the time you watch this show, Yolanda has her own apartment. Uh, she's got a job, she's doing well, and why? Because of you, actually. Uh, she came to Cherry Street Mission Ministries, as you heard, uh, in a way that not only was burdened by her own perceptions of homelessness, not only uh, what was going on in her own life and the complications that she was facing every day, but because of your help and your support, you provided a solution for her. You provided the solution of housing and you provided the solution of stability. You provided the solution of transformation. And every time you go to our website at cherrystreetmission.org and you click on that, how can I get involved in, 
uh, solutions and you click a few clicks further and you begin to donate, you begin to give of yourself, trust me, you are serving thousands of Yolandas every single year through Cherry Street Mission Ministries and that's what you do every day. Can I tell you that we need you at Cherry Street more today than we have ever needed you in our nearly seven decade relationship with you. The problems that you and I face have ready solutions and there are fantastic opportunities for you to get involved through volunteerism and to financially give. Will you also do us a favor today? Also pray for us as well. And Delray, when we think about people and the way that they engage us at Cherry Street, prayer is always at the top of our list. Yes, absolutely. So going into, um, you know, we talked about the myths of homelessness, things like that. Uh, how can this line be straightened? Well, the line can be straightened uh, by us. Mm -hmm. You know, the line was straightened in my life uh, after I got to Cherry Street. It was straightened in your life. And the line is straightened because you engage people around you, you slow yourself down, and you begin to see people for who they are. But can I just tell you, you begin to see people for who God has made them. Mm. And if you can see people for who God has made them, you're one second away from seeing who God has made them to be. And it's that hope that we have in God in the life of another person that drives our solutions. And so as we engage solutions with our viewers today, we would just ask you as you slow down, see people, and would you mind starting with yourself first? See yourself as the person God intended you to be. If you can start there, then Delray, you can start with somebody else. How can we engage people um, in, in the right way to not violate them or make them feel bad um, that are experience home, experiencing homelessness? Number one, you have got to take time off the table. All human beings need not more time, contrary to popular belief, all human beings need timelessness. We simply need people to take time off the table from us because the clock is ticking inside of our own mind, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The clock, clock is ticking because we've, we've lived so long and by now we should be somewhere, by now we should have uh, been reconciled with God, reconciled with family, reconciled with uh, career, but uh, we haven't. And it is that time that weighs so heavily on us that we um, begin being our own worst enemy. So as you work with yourself and work with others, do your best to remove time from the equation. Yeah, we're definitely a time-oriented society, I we think. Are. I mean, I think that can really um, impact, uh, especially the, the homeless population. Maybe I, I see personally, you know, at Cherry Street, um, well, I've been here too long, or I've not been here long enough, you know, and, the, and those things, um, it differs from person to person, wouldn't you agree? Well, it does, it mm -hmm. does differ from person to person, mm -hmm. and uh, can we just remind ourselves and uh, each other today as we close today's program mm -hmm. that God's not wearing a watch. He's not uh, ticking down time for us mm -hmm. and asking us to get it quicker than we could get it. Sure. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.